Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about React and Redux. And in this video, we are going to uh, set up some reducers. In the last video, we created actions and an action is passed to a reducer to tell the reducer how to modify your application state, okay? So I'm gonna go into, um, into Atom and I can see that I've got my, my, um, my actions here. I've got the actions at the top and I have my action creators here. And then I have a folder here for reducers. So I'm gonna add a new file to the reducer folder and I'm gonna call this counter reducer. Dot js okay and what I need to do is I need to import the actions from my actions um, file right right so I'm going to import increment and decrement and I'm going to import them from and where am I so I'm here I got to go up a folder so I'll do dot dot slash actions and I can just do slash because this is index.js, right? So if it's index, you, you don't even have to name it, right? Okay, great. So what is a reducer? So a reducer is a function that takes in state and an action and returns new state, okay? So we can tell the reducer like, hey, um, you know, we want to change state in this way, the action describes how to change the state and the reducer has the job of, of making the changes, right? And then it returns the new state. So a reducer really is just a function, okay? So it's, it's just a function that we create. So I'm gonna make a new function here called counter reducer and I'll, I'll write it as an ES6 function here Okay, and there we go, we're done. And actually we should we should also export it, right? So I'm gonna export this as the default export. So I'll do counter reducer and export that. So that's pretty good. Um, so so what are what is what else does a reducer do? Well, a reducer is responsible for modifying state. So in order to modify state, state is passed to the reducer, right? So whenever you make a change to your program or to your application state, the uh, Redux system passes state to its reducers. It actually passes it to all the reducers and you can have reducers that are responsible for different areas of state, okay? Um, this one, we only have one piece of state in this program, right? Just one counter, right? And we want that counter to increment up or decrement down. And so we'll, we'll pass the current count into the counter reducer, right? And then um, it also takes in an action. So the second parameter for any reducer is the action, okay? So we get the state and we get the action. The action here is an object and it's the object that was returned from any one of the action creators, right? So, so the reducer takes in, like if you called increment count from one of your action creators, the reducer would get this object. And like we said earlier, we could also include a payload or some other information on this object, right? Some other data. This doesn't need it though, but we'll add it in the future and we'll, we'll experiment with that. But for right now, um, our, our actions are pretty simple. So anyway, so if we call decrement, we would get this object, right? So that would be on, on the, inside this action right here, okay? So one more thing. So a reducer um, takes in state, and an action, and then it, it modifies state. That's what happens in here, right? We're gonna modify state and return the new value for state, okay? The other thing that a reducer is responsible for is the default value for state. So anytime you start your program, it's possible that you don't have any values for state, right? You don't know what it is yet, so, or, or you have a default value that you start with. So in my case, I have a counter, and I want the counter to start with a, a value of zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the, the value as the default parameter for this for state. So if, if Redux calls the counter reducer and we haven't set state, then it'll pass undefined for state or null for state, and then we'll give state a value of zero. Okay? Okay, great. So now what do we do? So inside the reducer, the way that we handle changes to state is we use a switch case. Okay, so we'll say switch. And what we wanna do is we wanna switch on the action type. Okay, so I'm gonna say action.type, because remember this was the action object from our actions right here, and it should have a type in it, okay? So 
then we're going to look at the type and we can say if the type was increment then you know do something here maybe i'll say um return and we have to return state so the uh, the the reducer should always return state it's responsible for the default value and then it's also responsible for the new value okay so what i want to do here is i want to um return state plus one and then i'm going to set up another case here of decrement and when the action type is equal to decrement we will return um, state plus equals one. Let me put a semicolon there, right? Okay. And then uh, we'll put a break in here. And then what else? Uh, let's get the default value. So if, if we call, um, okay, if we call on, um, on this counter reducer, and we, um, we, we call it with an action that doesn't match one of the cases here, the counter reducer is still responsible for returning state. So we should always have a default value that just returns the current value for state. If you haven't make any, made any changes, you can always return state. If, and we'll, we'll do this later, but uh, in, a, in a later video, we'll modify this. But uh, if state is an object or a, a, a reference type, then we have to create a new reference type. So we can't return the same object modified. We have to make a new object and return that new object, right? But I'll, I'll cover that and, and hit that point home in a future video, okay? But anyway, this is essentially like our, our, our setup for our, our counter, right? Counter reducer, that is, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching.